get away. Okay. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, at, you know, I guess it depends where you are, but it's afternoon here. I'm in Central Daylight Time. It's one o'clock. Okay. Let me uh, let me share the screen here. Not that screen. This screen. Okay, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to kind of take a look at ignition and uh, take it from the standpoint of what are we teaching and why are we teaching it. And uh, I'm obviously a council lab uh, part-time employee and a technical trainer for them. Um, so what are we really going to do? Well, we'll take a brief look at the different types of systems. And I'm going to tell you right now, uh, I'm going to make it modern because it, it, to me, it doesn't make any sense. Um, I'm going to... For those of you that were around when I did the um, uh, the uh, fuel injector, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do use a DSO to actually teach how the system functions. Um, I, this is a trick that I've used for many, many, many years, and uh, and and it works. And so I, you know, I recommend you try it. Uh, we'll take a look at some uh, voltage waveforms, both primary and secondary. And we'll take a look at uh, some uh, current waveforms, uh, primary, and then we'll talk about the paddle probe for secondary. Now, excuse me, uh, I'm on for two days here, two, two afternoons, and um, my plan is tomorrow to walk up to a vehicle that's in my garage, have a camera on, on the engine, talk about the system that's actually there, and then figure out and have you figure out what kind of information you can get, um, whether it's whether you can get a primary voltage, whether you can get a secondary voltage, whether you can get a, uh, a primary current waveform, or whether you need to use a paddle pump. So I'll, we'll do that and we'll link it live and we'll put it, uh, we'll put it using a Pico. So that, that's what we're doing. I have some suggestions. First one's pretty obvious, you know. Second one. Dick and I are big believers in this, and actually everybody in Council Lab is. Use a DSO, and, and to have a student use a DSO, have them use it as early as you can. Teach them how to set voltage per division. Teach them how to set division. Use the trigger, and then send them out and have them measure time in volts, and volts. And that, that really works well, and that's how they learn things. So in that process, they're actually using the DSO. Um, you know, I've, I've had guys say, well, you know, I'll, I use a scanner. Well, okay. You know, what, what kind of data is available on a scanner nowadays with ignition? Yeah, maybe, maybe uh, you know, uh, RPM and, and advance or something, but not a lot. Um, also, have, have simple lab sheets that follow what you have available for them to work on. You know, I've said before that, you know, you need to have, you need to look outside and see what kind of systems you have. I had a conversation not too long ago with a gentleman and he was in a class that I was teaching and I, it was a CAN bus class. And, and he said, after it was over, he was very polite. And, and he said, after it was over, he says, you know, I, I really have a problem now. I don't have enough time to teach CAN bus. He said, I'd have to get rid of something. And I asked him, I said, okay, um, what are you teaching that's not on cars today? And he said, well, you know, the, I, I got to start them out somewhere. I said, okay, do you teach breaker points? He said, well, yeah. How long do you teach breaker points? Well, just a couple of days. A couple of days? Huh. Do you teach carburetors? Well, yeah. How long do you teach carburetors? Oh, we spend a good week or so on, a, on carburetors. <laughs> well, guess what? Get rid of breaker points. Get rid of carburetors. You have the time for CAN bus. There are limited systems out there with a distributor. And, and as you get to the point where you start looking out in your in your um, your storage lot and, and see less and less distributors, think about console app. This is a, an EM200-12, and it's basically a Ford TFI system. Um, and and the, the Ford TFI system has a distributor. So if you can see my, there's your distributor. It's got a hand crank. 
students love this. And two, two battery cables, a plus and a minus. It's the simplest system in the world. And, and it, it, it's got an ignition module uh, that's attached and it, it's really, really easy. So if you get to the point where you don't have anything with a distributor anymore and you still want to teach distributors, keep this in mind. Without a distributor, we have basically three systems. We have coil unplug, COP, coil near plug, CNP, and waste spark. Now, if you think about what's out there right now, waste spark, uh, it's going the way of breaker points. I mean, there still are some of them out there, you know, but there, there's not near as many. Coil near plug, very, very, very few. There are still some. What's most everybody going to? Coil on plug, okay? And there's obviously major differences in manufacturers. You need to teach what you have available, but start with the distributor if you can, and then go to distributor list because the distributor will give them a, an idea of, of delivering the spark to the individual cylinders. That's, that's the key to it, okay? Uh, again, we have a whole bunch of ignition trainers. Um, the one that I had in a previous slide uh, was the 200-12, and again, it's a Ford TFI with a distributor. The one on the left side of the screen here um, is, is basically a Honda, and it's a Honda coil on plug, complete system, complete system. It's got a motor and, and that drives it, and it's got four individual coils. And then my favorite toy is on the right there. That's the EM330. This is a complete ignition system, a complete fuel system, um, a complete, you know, it's got mass airflow, it's got a fuel pump, it's got everything on it. You could teach literally half a year on just what's in this, uh, in this trainer. So kind of keep it in mind. First, what do they all have in common? Well, we have to close the circuit to the coil primary. So current's going to flow through it. And that's the beginning of, and, and we don't use the word dwell very much anymore, but it's still a valid term. And that's the dwell, the amount of time that primary current is on. And during this time, the coil gets saturated. And, we, and then we open the circuit to the coil. Magnetic field collapses induced and a spark a lot of times i will start on a board and you remember this from before and i'll i'll draw myself a very very simple diagram i'll start with plus and then a coil of wire and i'll come out and i'll put some kind of a switch i'll change colors of pens because the next part is the ground and then i say okay now where, where we typically put the DSO is right here. And then walk the students through and say, okay, what does that DSO show us right now? And, and after they eventually get to the point where they realize that it's, it shows them B plus, fine, then we, then we need to change things around. So we erase... Um, First of all, I erase red, and I'll go back to black. Now, what does the DSO show? And the, and the answer is obviously it shows it shows uh, negative. And I should have erased this part here too. Okay. I think that's a real interesting and a neat way to do it personally. Okay. So anyway. With this in mind, and when we dissipate remaining energy, then, then, we, then we have a student go out and we have the student come back and say, okay, what does this really look like on a DSO? And, and have a measure with cursors if you can. They can come out with a very accurate measurement of voltage. They can come out with a very accurate measurement of ground, which is, which is an interesting, you know, we, you all know, because you've been involved in this for more than 20 minutes, that ma many of our problems begin and end at the ground. We have just as many or more ground circuit issues than we sometimes have B plus side. So the ability to be able to look at a circuit and say, is this a good ground, is this a bad ground, or whatever, is important, and, and, and get them, the students, to the point where they recognize that zero volts is ground. So you ask the questions of students. Why, why is there a B-plus at the start? What happens? You know, why, why did it go down right here? Why, why did it go down? What, what happened right here? And, of course, the answer is we turned on primary current. 
okay? And then dwell. Well, what is dwell? Dwell is the amount of time to, between turning primary current on and when we turn it off. And by the way, I don't have that on the screen on purpose, okay? I'm interested that they understand a, a couple of concepts, and, and I'm going to get into uh, module functions here in a couple of minutes, okay? What impact does this is this going to have on current flow? Well, and this is just a, a larger diagram of it. Here's the same vehicle with, and, and by the way, just so you understand it, this, if you look all the way in the top here, Pico Automotive 6, primary voltage signal EM200-12. So this pattern came off of our trainer. And you can see I was at 11.7 volts or whatever. So the battery that was powering this was beginning to go down quite a bit. Okay, current flow. Now, again, you know, we asked the student question. Well, okay, what happened here? Why, why are we at zero amps? Or zero volts, actually. And then, and then what happens? Why, is, why does it climb? And, and why does it flatten down here? Okay. What's the point of this? Well, it's the basics of ignition. And when we put things together with a small amount of theory, theory that has an implication, not theory for theory's sake. I've had people, you know, tell me, oh, I, I spent a lot of time going through the difference in the primary and the secondary windings, the number of windings, the size of the wire. And I ask myself, okay, why do you do that? That's theory for theory's sake. Well, I think it's really important. No, it's something you know. You learned it somewhere along the line, and now you want to teach it. And I think that's unfortunate. You need to be able to give the student an, a, a background that will help him out in the field. We're going to use the basics literally every day. You have to get to the point, I think, where you have the student have the ability to sequence events. What really happens, hey, if you're sitting on the negative terminal of the ignition coil primary, what happens first? What do you see first? Well, I see voltage. Then what happens? I bring that voltage down to ground by turning on the circuit. When I turn on the circuit, current begins to ramp or it begins to go up. Eventually, when the coil is fully saturated, which is this point right here, in this particular system, this module is cutting back. This module has current limit. Current limit is not as popular as it used to be, but there still are some cars with it. So anyway, now what happened here is the coil is fully saturated, but yet we continued on until we fired the plug, which is done right here. Okay? Current, when we fire the plug, current goes down to zero and voltage jumps up and that's what's gonna, that's what's gonna fire the plug, obviously. This is where a dual trace really works well. Now, uh, in all honesty, if, if you're looking and you're saying, well, you know, I'm really not into DSOs just yet, get a couple of, of U-scopes, you know, relatively inexpensive. You can't, they're not dual trace, but they're good enough and you can start showing things with this, okay? So, all this primary, what's it really there for? Well, it generates a voltage, and it generates a voltage in both windings. You're going to have the students look at the primary first, and at that point, you're going to have them read the voltage. When they get to the induced voltage, they may have a little bit of trouble reading it because it's uh, so high. 50 volts per division, 50, 100, 150, 200. 250, this would be 300, about 275 volts or so, okay? So this, this 275 volts on the primary, then the next question asked the students is, well, okay, is 275 volts enough to fire a spark plug? And the answer is no, because 275 volts is not going to jump the air gap of a plug. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is where, again, now what we have to do is get the secondary involved in it. So what is the secondary? Well, first of all, it's a winding that's very close. And, and when the induced field cuts across both the primary and the secondary, that's where we get the induced voltage. Now, we already said at, on, on the primary winding that we were generating about 275 volts. So the secondary is where we're actually going to generate the spark. When we generate the spark, that plug, or that end of that secondary, is going to be connected to a plug. Now, 
I may have jumped ship on you here quickly, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not spending much time on this right now. I will in a minute. What we have here, though, for the student is to is use one with a plug wire to start with because the plug wire makes sense for them. So here, this is a coil near plug, and we've got a short plug wire and a little boot, and there's our spark plug, and we're in business. So we generate the voltage, we jump the gap. Then here comes the big thing. The big thing is, in days of old, you know, when, when guys would look at this with old ignition scopes, they always looked at the firing voltage. What was the firing voltage? And, you know, we came up with numbers, you know, 6,000 and 10,000 volts and all of us this, when in reality, it really didn't matter. <coughs> what matters is how long did the spark last or what is the burn time? So burn, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> burn time is typically between 0.8 to 2.0. We know having looked at this carefully, that if you have over 2.0 milliseconds, you burn up spark plugs. Well, think about the life of plugs nowadays. I mean, they last 100,000 miles in some cars. So obviously, we're not all the way up to the end of two milliseconds. We're down toward the bottom. What happens if you get lower than 0.8? That's where you get into misfire. So the 0.8 is the necessary length of time in milliseconds that the spark actually occurs. And what's it, what's, why is this a goal? Well, that's the goal because we know that if we're less than that, we're going to have misfire. I don't worry so much about the 2.0 milliseconds. It is possible, but typically that car comes in the door with burnt coils, okay? And, and won't, you know, on the end of a tow hook type thing. So then the next thing to do is have to say, well, okay, where's, the, where's this module? And, and if we have the module, then, you know, where is it? Is, is it external to the coil? If it is, then take a look at, okay, if you have a distributor, most of the time you've got an external coil. Distributorless? Maybe. And in this situation, <coughs> with, a, with a module that's external, you may have primary voltage you likely have secondary voltage if you have a plug wire and you have primary current. So you have all of the, all the necessary items. You got primary voltage, you got primary current, and you have secondary voltage. Doesn't happen very often on new cars. Nowadays, what we see and what's the most common is we take the ignition module and we stick it inside the coil. There's an ignition module. There's an ignition module. There's a module. There's a module. This is a four-cylinder car. Those modules are controlled off a signal coming from the PCM or the ECM, depending on, on what CM they want to they want to table it. But this is probably the most common thing right now. And this is going to be either coil on plug or coil near plug. Primary voltage, usually available, but not always. Secondary voltage available on coil near plug. In other words, the picture shows you coil near plug. Okay, you're going to be able to get a, a, an inductive pickup down there and you're going to be able to read secondary voltage. Secondary voltage might be unavailable on a lot of coil on plugs. The one I'm going to work with tomorrow is, is probably not going to have it available. I'll let you figure that out. Okay, which means we have to use a paddle probe. But primary current is going to be available. Okay. The module signal will also be available because if we go all the way back to the module, it has to know what's going on. So then, again, we ask ourselves, is it greater than 0.8 milliseconds? This is a, a real type car. We're at a half a millisecond per division. This is the beginning of spark. There's a half a millisecond. There's one millisecond. There's about one and a quarter milliseconds. So 0.8 is the standard. And we're at 1.25, so we're, we're in good shape in this particular one. Why? Burn times are really important, okay? You have to realize that obviously the whole purpose of this ignition system is to get the mixture burning without misfire. And without misfire means that we have to, we have to be able to, to have a spark which lasts long enough, okay? Measuring secondary voltage the old way, uh, was no, usually done by induction. Nowadays, that's really tough to get at. You have to have a special adapter, and that adapter you would need, the adapters, would fill, you know, a, a huge toolbox 
because they've got you know hundreds of adapters and for all these different cars, years, makes, models, everything. It makes much more sense, and we'll talk about the paddle probe in a little while, okay? Because the paddle probe is going to show us that spark occurred, and it's also going to give us burn time. Now, notice, you can't use a paddle probe and say, well, I, I've got 7,000 volts at the secondary. No. What you can say is there was a spark. A spark did occur, okay? Here's a paddle probe. And this is, uh, let's see, what's this off of? Uh, oh, this is off the 212 also. This is the, the paddle probe. And you can see, I mean, if you look over here, you say, well, it's generating 100 volts, but what is that? We don't care. We know there's a spark. How do we know there's a spark? Because we have this firing line, okay? But this is the important part. The important part is, what's the distance between here and here? Well, if you look down here, this is 0.994, and this is a negative 0.006. So we've got one millisecond between here. That's one full millisecond. So did the spark last over 0.8? Yeah, sure did. And that's important. Okay? So the ignition module is going to come in a variety of things. They're either going to be two function, on and off, three function, on and off, and current limit, or four, and these aren't used very much anymore, where we add variable dwell to it. Could be in a distributor. Coil pack, glove box, trunk, you, you name it. They put the damn thing anywhere they want. Okay, what does it do? Well, if we take a look at a two function and we said use a current for it, and we said, okay, it does on and off. And, and every module has to have this function because we have to turn on primary current and then we have to turn off primary current. So every, every module has at least two functions. Or you don't have a start, you know, you're in tennis shoe mode. Okay, so it takes the coil negative from B plus down to ground, current ramps up, and you can see the ramp right here, ramps up, and you can measure it, and we're not going to worry too much about measuring it right now. And then when we turn it off, here's where we're firing the spark plug. Okay? If you look at it, you can also measure how long. Usually, not always, but usually, we want to have primary current on for greater than about two and a half milliseconds. Okay? Now, this is current limit, and the reason we know it's current limit is it flat tops. Okay, let me back up. Current limit, no current limit. On, off. Okay, this is current limit, and it may have variable dwell. How do we know it has current limit, and what does current limit do? Well, we know it has current limit because it's flat tops. It's just straight across. Over here somewhere off the screen is where it's going to drop down and we're going to fire the plug. This is used to prevent overheating the coil. It always allows for enough spark and increased plug light. Okay. I like to say it's kind of like cruise control. You know, you start accelerating and you've been on cruise before. And as you begin to accelerate, you hit the, you hit the resume button. It takes you up with, with pretty decent throttle until you get get a correct speed and then it cuts the throttle back. That's what this is. That's what current limit is. If you put the two side by side, well, then it begins to make sense. The one on the left is two function on off. The one on the right is will be on and off because you have to have that. But this one's also going to have current limit, which is that that flat top. OK, now. You, you need, when you're teaching this to students, you know, you, you need to take a look at, at, at other things. You know, how, do, how does this system know what's actually going on? What, what is it? Does it get an AC voltage? Does it get pulsing DC? What does it get? Okay, here's that distributor again off the EM200. It, so your timing control may be part of the distributor. But obviously, we don't have many distributors anymore. So instead, what we wind up with is crankshaft, CKP, or CMP camshaft. Here's a combination. We've got AC magnetic on the left. We've got DC Hall effect, or just DC, on the right. Is this important? Yeah. Notice we're using the DSO to show how something works, recognizing that in many vehicles, both are used. So you have speed, one of them for speed, you can probably figure out which one that is, and one of them for position. Here's the positioning tag right there, or tab, okay? So this is for position, and this is for speed. And all the PCM or ECM is doing is counting. It's a counter, okay? Waste spark, 
um, you know, it, 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 it's here, it's in the handout, and I'm going to make the handout available to you if you want it. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, okay, <clears throat> because it, it, it's not being used much at all. Uh, I will give you this, though. This is, a, uh, this, this is a V6 coil pack shorted on the left, and after we replaced it, it's what's on the right. You'll notice the difference here. This vehicle module takes primary current straight up to the maximum of current limit and it holds it there and then brings it down. In reality, what it's supposed to do is ramp. See the slight ramp to it? Current limit, fire. Ramp, current limit, fire, et cetera. Okay. So what type of module function does the particular one have? Well, this has got primary current. It's got current ramps and, and current limit. So in other words, this is probably at least a three function and maybe a four function. Don't forget, turn primary off, that's when we generate the spark. Now, here's your most common thing now. This happens to be a Ford, but it's, it's a coil on plug. This particular system, we're going to have primary voltage on this vehicle. We're going to have primary voltage available. On a lot of them today, we don't have primary voltage available. There will always be primary. We'll use the paddle. Um, just, uh, uh, you know, this is the coil on plug. Uh, this is the EM330. And then obviously one other thing to always keep in mind is any of our test benches will give you all the information that you need. And that's an important thing, plus, you know, a, a other option uh, things. Um, this is a coil near plug, and this was an early one. It's about 2000. And you'll notice there's a heat sink right on top of the coil. That's a dead giveaway that inside that coil is the switching transistors. So what can we get? We look at the system and we say, what can we get? Can we do primary voltage? Can we do primary current? Can we get, can we get secondary? Coil on plug systems might have no primary available. What they do is they have the modular switching circuit inside the coil and it gets this, it gets this square wave signal. Then the, the switching, switching transistor inside the module inside the coil and gets the signal and it controls current and there's the current now if we take it one step a little bit further there's the two of them together in blue is the signal from the uh, from the pcm going to the ignition module and the red is current and this is on the same vehicle <clears throat> uh, I, don't, I don't remember what this one's on, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, now again, we want to know how long was primary current on? So we put a cursor here, and we put another cursor here, and it's 3.57 milliseconds. So primary current was on greater than 2.5 milliseconds. Then we use a paddle probe to tell us how long the spark was, and we're basically done. So the inputs that are going to be needed can be looked at. Engine speed, again, crankshaft position, okay. Sometimes we use a CMP in ignition. As a matter of fact, most of the time, I should say. Um, and if the CMP, remember, is a camshaft position sensor, okay. Is there a relationship between them? Well, obviously. Um, both of them can be used to give speed, but the more pulses you have per rotation, the more accurate the speed is. Um, CMP, by the way, the speed is the top one, the red one, and CMP is the bottom one. Together, they're going to give the information to the PCM or ECM. Okay, and again, that's just the same thing, a little bit larger. ECM today controls primary current. And on many of these vehicles, there is no ability to be able to see primary voltage. What you see right there on the screen is about all you're going to get. Add to this a, uh, a paddle probe and you've got the whole thing. Okay. Guys, teach the basics of a DSO first. Have the students see what's going on. Have them measure and record on time. That's primary on time burn time, B plus and ground voltages. Have them actually look it up. Look at the secondary to see a spark. Use the paddle probe. Look at input sensors. Set up any faults you want in school vehicles, engines, or trainers. 
you know, uh, I, you know, there was a conversation before we started this where people were talking about, yeah, I used to make engine benches and everything. I did too. I made my share of engine benches, but they were never as good as what's available out there on the market, especially from console lab. So kind of, kind of keep it in mind, guys. Don't use the scanner, or if you do, use it as the last, not the first tool. Okay? Um, let me un see. Okay, I have unshared my screen, I think. No, stop sharing. Uh, Jimmy, my screen off? Yes, sir, and I'm going to stop the recording. You do that.